Wendy, after the flurry of activity that we've seen the last two weeks with the trade deadline and the buyout market, who is your favorite to win the NBA title this year? I don't have a good answer for you because it's been so hard to put this thing together. I, I think the Nets are a scary team when they're at full power. Um, I didn't like the signing of LaMarcus Aldridge because I think it blocks playing time for one of the great revelations of this season for them, which is the young big man, Nick Claxton. They've been awesome with him on the court, but that's not going to determine the championship. I find it hard to believe at full force that the Nets are going to be easy to beat four out of seven. But also, you know, the Lakers, the Lakers demonstrate that they're the number one defensive team in the league when they're fully healthy. And if they've got LeBron and AD at full strength, I mean, that is a beast of a team to stop. So I can't see between the two of them. And yet I could sit here and make you a case for other teams. So hopefully we get a highly interesting and intense playoffs that is free from delays from COVID-19 shutdowns and free from injuries. But, of course, that's not been the case in recent years. Yeah, that's always now the X factor, right, with, with it. It's what team might get affected and might lose a player for X amount of time, and that could certainly affect them. Brian Windhorst joining us right here on KJZ ESPN Radio. Uh, Wendy, you just talked about the Nets a little bit here, and, and James Harden not went out of his way, but basically just boldly stated when asked about the MVP conversation, <laughs> said – that he is, he should be in the conversation, that he thinks he is the guy that should be MVP. You've had the injuries to Embiid, the injuries to LeBron. Um, Does does he, and I'm not going to say by default, but by just the way he's playing right now with the Nets, does he move to the top of your list as somebody that would be voting? Yeah, he's a really strong candidate for me. Um, Guys, this MVP race is going to be, there's some people going to, going to be in their feelings on this one (laughs) because we have a lot of candidates. We have a lot of mitigating factors, LeBron's injury, Embiid's injury, James Harden's trade demand. And, you know, we have sort of an unclear, like who's the best team in the league. Is it, is it the Lakers? Is it the Clippers? Is it the Nets? Is it the the, the 76ers? And you have guys who are putting up great numbers like Luca, who should be in there, like Steph Curry, whose teams aren't quite as good. It's going to be a mess. There's going to be an incredible amount of campaigning. Uh, some of it going to be yeah. clear. Some of it's going to be, uh, you know, subtle. Uh, I think it's going to be an incredible finish. And and Harden has got a remarkable case. I just don't know how the voters are going to treat that action. I mean, at the end of the day, how can you look at what he's done, the position he's put himself in, and then look at what the Rockets have done? and say that James Harden didn't make a good decision by trying to force his way to Brooklyn. How can you look him square in the eye and say you did something that was that sh- you should be punished about? I can't do that. Um, I wish he wouldn't have gone to strip clubs. Uh, I thought that was a terrible look and an insult to his teammates and a, and a bad thing for the NBA. But I can't look him in the eye and say, James, I think you made a mistake and say you wanted to be, with a, be a Brooklyn Net. How can I do that? So he'll have a very strong a case for me. I also think Embiid has been awesome. And, and, you know, before LeBron got hurt, he was playing spectacularly. So if the Lakers are in sixth place, when LeBron comes back and all of a sudden he carries them like, you know, 12 wins and 13 games to roar to the number two seed, that will be compelling too. Wendy, do you think media voters will hold it against James Harden? Do you think that will hinder him? I do, Jay. I do. Um, In fact, um, we, we, you know, Tim Bontemps uh, did a, a, a straw poll uh, about maybe about a month or five weeks ago. And, and granted, Harden has played very well since then. He's increased his pace. But Harden, I don't believe, was even in the top 12 or 13 in the vote. And he, by the way, he interviewed That's 100 so of the ex- – Yeah, and so I, I do I do believe that. I do believe – especially because um, a lot of the voters are from – I mean, I don't want to cast aspersions. Some of the voters, you know, cover teams that are, you know, that are damaged by teams wanting trade. Um, this doesn't help you know, star players asking for trades to the coasts, forcing their way to the coast. Uh, the majority of the voters are in middle America. OK, I live in Omaha, Nebraska. I have I have a feel for both sides. Um, that's going to offend a certain segment of the people who are like, why didn't you want to stick with your team? To me, it does not affect my vote. But if you're asking me whether I think it will affect it, I do. I think it's a hurdle for him to overcome. I think LeBron was punished the year that he went to Miami. Uh, You know, Derrick Rose won the MVP and he was terrific that year. But I think if you go back and look at it, LeBron was punished because the vote wasn't even close. And maybe Derrick Rose was the MVP, but 
it should have been neck and neck. And LeBron wasn't even considered by most voters because they said, you know, basically you got to have penance for, for going to Miami. And that, that stigma still remains on guys. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.